It's nearing the end of June and the garden is exploding with growth. My peas have been producing for a few weeks now and I've picked my main season broccoli already, as well as my first sowing of lettuces, spinach, radishes, and potatoes. They've all been picked and eaten. Yet there is still so much to wait for. My tomatoes are just beginning to fruit. The onions and carrots are bulking up under the soil with the sweet alyssum. Beans, potatoes, spaghetti squash, watermelon, celery, and pumpkins are all taking their time and will have their time to shine in just a few short weeks. But it's so fun to watch the garden explode and to have my kids and my husband by my side. The creativity that it takes to create a garden is not talked about enough because with each problem, you need a solution. And the solutions are fun to come up with. And with all of this going on, all of these things still growing in and around the raised beds, it's wild to think that it's time to start thinking about our fall and winter garden. But June is the time to start many of your cool season crops. So today I wanna to talk about succession planting and intercropping. As you can see, I work in a small space in a suburban backyard garden. I have five raised beds with some overflow on the driveway. I have some grow bags for tomatoes and my tomato trellis, as well as some um, potato containers and a small little herb garden in terracotta pots. The goal for this backyard garden is to grow as much as of my own food as possible throughout the year. Now this is done by succession planting and interplanting crops. Even though the space is small, you still can produce so much food. It just takes some planning, some forethought, and some organization. Now, if you haven't heard of the term succession planting, uh, it is the practice of trying to be, I guess, as efficient with your garden space as possible. It's the practice of taking out a harvested or spent plant and replacing it with a new fresh crop. And it doesn't always necessarily have to be the same plant. Sometimes what's best for the soil is rotating those crops around so that where once you had beans or where once you had carrots, the next you can place in um, tomatoes or um, lettuce, something else. So you're popping crops and plants around your garden space for maximum, most efficient um, garden production. So, so far in the garden, I've already started to succession plant by intercropping, um, by direct seeding. Let me show you some of those areas. I wanna start by showing you our front bed here where I've planted the majority of our peas. And since this is such a large space that's taken up, I have had to think about what I would like to place next in this area. And I've went ahead and started some corn, some corn in this area by direct sowing. So if you can see these shoots right here, I'm planting four rows of corn interplanted with some creeping thyme. If you can see the little shoots are starting to come up, that's a living mulch or ground cover and a succession of spinach here, which will be done as you can tell before the corn starts to take full, full shape and take over this whole area. Another space that I've started to do a bit of succession planting by intercropping is in this garlic strip right here. As you can see, the garlic is almost ready to harvest. I think I have about three of the leaves that are starting to die back, which is how you know it's almost ready to go. Um, but since I knew this would be a quick turnaround crop, I've went ahead and planted some carrot seeds that obviously will need to be thinned throughout this whole, this whole row here as well in these areas oh there's a bee these are covered with bees our poppies and as you can tell most of them are spent right or coming to a close some of them still have a little bit of life left but i've went ahead and started to plant some other flower seedlings because as these start to peel away as we pull these out the space will be bare 
So I've planted some Cosmos as well as some small Dahlias in this area. So once these are lifted out of the space, the new flowers will have the light and the space to grow. <gasps> but look at the bees. Similarly, similarly back here, in this area we had a ton of poppies. And in the in-between spaces, I've planted some Cosmos and some more Dahlias to take their place. I want to make sure I have flowering plants throughout the garden just to add a pop of beauty, but also to provide a home for our pollinators. With all of my tomatoes, I have interplanted another crop. And as you can see, this one is about ready. I've planted radishes around my tomatoes for pest control, but also since they take up minimal space. Mom. Likewise, by this watermelon vine, I have a basil and nasturtium. I also plan to direct seed another round of both green beans and black beans when the first planting of beans comes um, close to finishing. So as you can see here, these are our black beans and they're starting to flower. I currently have these planted next to a tomato trellis, some sunflowers, our peas, and some asters. Oh, and some spinach. There are some areas where I wasn't so successful with the intercropping succession planting though. Um, here in our middle bed, I definitely could have been more productive and proactive in managing the space. As you can see, our poppies are coming to a close and the heavier ones I've started to pull out from the center. We also have our lettuces, which we've been harvesting from the outside, but are about finished. And another bib lettuce here. But only recently have I started to come in and direct sow some more lettuce. I did though plant some white beans next to some peas and the peas are finally finishing up in this area while the beans are kind of just starting to flower. So this strip is okay. It's this side that I have neglected thoroughly. I have to say, this is one of my favorite views of the garden right now. Another area I really could have done, uh, managed a lot better, is this area right here in front of the broccoli. While these two have, the main crop has already been harvested, you can see we have some off offshoots coming growing up the sides and if you didn't know this is how broccoli grew guys <laughs> I know surprising right this is where the tops came off and this one actually is taking a little bit longer but probably won't get too big since we're already in the heat of the summer but down here as you can see our chamomile is taking forever to come up which is fine but only recently have I started to add in a few more sweet alyssum some of our lettuce seedlings I just did last week. But overall, this has been pretty bare. The fennel. So some things I feel like I did okay. Other spaces I feel like were neglected and I could have done a lot better. But that's just what experience and time will do. Next year, hopefully I'll be better. <laughs> you can also succession plant by sowing seeds into pots in order to transplant at a later date. Now, since I am planning on growing vegetables in my garden, in my raised beds, in my backyard, through the fall and into the winter, and hopefully some of the winter, things like cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, these are all things that I am starting in pots from seed now. I plan to grow these in pots until about August when it would be time to plant them out into the landscape so that they can settle in before the really cold weather hits. And hopefully this, they will spend the rest of their life cycle um, in my raised beds until I harvest them in maybe the fall and into the winter. Other things that you can account for to plant later in the season to overwinter are garlic, um, peas, and maybe some potatoes, depending on where you live. I'm in a zone six, so I'll be trying some of those this year. On top of those vegetables, I would also like to start some herbs and flowers so that as the season starts to dwindle, I have um, a succession of um, transplant and crop plants and masking plants to, to ensure that my harvest 
is um, is 100% all the way to the very end of summer. As well, I have perennials that I'd like to start in pots so that they get large enough by the fall that I can transplant them out into my landscape to save so much money at the garden center. I'm hoping to start some echinacea and some hyssop that way as well this year. So why don't you come along with me? I'll show you my succession planting in my little pots that I've gotten, I've started, and you can see how things have progressed over the last few weeks. All right, I have 15 little containers in total, and this is a mix of flowers, um, some vegetables, and herbs, which, yeah, I think is a really great first start. I have some more vegetables that I can start um, uh, after, like, the next four weeks because those only take, like, 80 or 90 days to mature, so I'm not ready to start those yet. But for now, I think this is a good smattering. Now my goal today is to start a few of the, a few more seeds, seeds that we didn't start last time, that will be key for me for my fall and winter garden. Those include the cauliflower, cabbages, um, a few more broccoli varieties, and um, and maybe a few more flowers. I might try some, yeah, some a few more flowers since the other flowers aren't the echinacea and things aren't doing so well so far. It looks like so I have my supplies. This is a free um, little like seed like a pot holder that I got from the um, like free area in Home Depot which okay the most amazing find you just kind of kind of have to search the racks and they have stacks and stacks of piles of these that you can just take for free in my mix I'm going to be using organic land and sea compost as well as some of my perennial raised bed mix that we um, that we have delivered from a local landscape company. So I'm gonna get this mixed up and we can get started.
Okay, so full breakdown of what I am planting today. I'm gonna plant some catnip because I would like to do another round of potatoes before the end of the season. And I wanna have some of this planted along the potatoes for um, pest control and prevention. So it'd be good to have these ready when I'm ready to plant those potatoes out in, I don't know, two, three, three weeks, three, four weeks. So this, I'm gonna plant some more dill because, um, well, why not? <laughs> I, I'm finding through research, reading, listening that dill is just a great comp companion plant with most things. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and sow some of this we're gonna do a few more decisio broccoli since it did so well in our, and has done so well in our raised beds right now. We'll try Calabrese broccoli, okay. This, if you remember, <laughs> um, winter heart, winter was winter sown in our milk jugs and did really well as a winter sown crop. But once I transplanted it into my raised beds, did not do so well. So I almost wonder if this is just a really cool season broccoli variety, I'll have to look into that. We're going to do a Sun King Hybrid Broccoli, Golden Acre Cabbage, Copenhagen Market Early Cabbage, and Cauliflower. Now this is just my first sowing of all of these things. I might come back in, I don't know, two, three weeks and do some more of these so that I'm, I'm succession planting essentially um, and planting to have something growing in my garden um, through most of the fall and hopefully through the winter. So let's get started on these guys. Now, all of these pots, I don't know if I had mentioned before in our in my first sewing video, these are all the um, biodegradable seed starting pots and I got them from Home Depot. Those are maybe five or seven dollars for a large pack. Um, and most of these seeds, the seeds that I'm sewing today are from Home Depot's selection as well. But I like to buy my seeds from um, where I found that um, I've been most successful at finding what I like. Home Depot, um, garden centers. I have um, a really nice, small, local, locally owned grocery store that actually carries seeds. And I've bought a number of them, a number of seeds from them. I think this, this is one that I got from them and maybe a few more. Um, and then I also do mail order sometimes. I did that at the beginning of the year with all of the seeds that I, um, I use for the winter sowing jugs. You can get a lot of really cool varieties of plants um, by looking on different websites. I ordered from Baker Creek. I ordered from Territorial Seeds or Territorial Seed Company, I think. Um, Johnny Seeds has a really nice selection and there's a lot of information on those websites if you're just new to the starting, starting, excuse me, starting seeds or growing food um, in your backyard process like I am so uh, highly recommend you check all of those resources out if you need just some assistance with trying to figure out what to do but for now I think this is a great way to establish a year-round vegetable garden um, on a you know on a budget because well you know we're budgeting these days so um, so like I said catnip is a um, repellent or trap crop, masking crop, I don't know, it does one of those things, but it's great to plant with, um, with your potatoes. I'm going to get a few of these out. Now, I've read that catnip, as part of um, the mint family, you will want to, this is days to maturity, 85 days, so it might not even, it might not even 
be ready by the time <laughs> I'm, my potatoes are even done. But I'm gonna give it a shot. And who knows, it's been so warm, and even into October, sometimes into November, that I could, I could be harvesting food, you know, through, through the fall. So I'm gonna lightly scatter these seeds across the top of the soil. And I'm gonna put that there so I don't forget what I did. So like I said, I'm lightly scattering these on the back of the soil pack, you can see, it'll give you some guidelines on how to plant them. The brock or the cauliflower says seed depth a quarter of an inch, seeds facing four to six inches. Um, I'm going to just lightly sprinkle though across the top because once they start to germinate and come up, I can always transplant them to, whoa, bigger containers. So I'll start with this and see what happens. I had a uh, shoddy like 50-50 germination on my last go round. So I really want to make sure that, um, that I'm planting enough to get at just like even, I'd be happy with two, you know, one or two that come up. Do some broccoli. These are the broccoli seeds, very similar to the cauliflower. Once I'm done um, sprinkling them across the top of the, the soil, then I'll come back through with a smaller layer of our soil mixture here and um, just lightly cover so that the seeds can get some sun if and when they're ready for it. The one important thing is, is to keep your seedlings hydrated and watered at least for the first few weeks, um, you need to keep the soil moist. And maybe that was one of the problems that I had. It was so hot. The, um, when I had done those, it was already up into the 90s. So I might not have kept the soil as hydrated as I, it needed to be. You can only do so much in a day though. So give yourself some grace. And if it doesn't work out, try again. We still have a few, plenty of time to get um, in my zone, zone six, to get some of these late fall, winter seeds started. Let's do cabbage. I would say one thing that is the most frustrating is opening the seed packs. <laughs> I'm only going to do a few of these since I do take up so much space. And I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure what to do with the cabbage yet. We don't cook with cabbage too often in my house, but it would be nice to be able to make some sauerkraut or um, maybe try our own kimchi. Just eat it with, I don't know, sausage, ham, or potatoes. I'm trying new things this year, guys. And when you can grow them yourself from seed for a dollar, why not? Why not get adventurous and try new things? I'm gonna make sure. Put this here. And then our last one will be deal. Deal? Deal. These ones are cute. Look, they're like flaky and flat.
I think there are plenty of different mediums that you can use to top your seeds with. I've seen people do a whole bunch of different things, so do what you feel is right and works well for your area. And if it's your first year, trying anything is better than, than trying nothing. You can always change it up the next time if it didn't work out well. But I'm thinking that if I give it a, um, a rich place to start, then it would be a happy, happy seed and a happy plant. I'm just going to pat this to make sure most of my seeds are covered because I do not want the birds coming in here. And speaking of birds, something that has really helped, I think, to deter some garden visitors like squirrels and rabbits, deer in my area, is doing a mixture of garlic powder and cayenne pepper in water and spraying it around the edge of the garden. That um, I haven't had any issues, guys. Maybe a few, but I came back out and sprayed and I haven't seen them since. Another, um, another problem that could have attributed to some of my issues with my seedlings over there is my kids come obviously play in the yard where I am and where all the seeds are and I think a few of them have gotten knocked over and rattled around uh, a bit so um, something to think about <laughs> for myself too. I need to find a better place, a storage place to keep these up off the ground, but I don't have I don't have that set up yet. So I'm just labeling these. These are cheap painter sticks that I also got from Home Depot. I just um, snapped them in half since I don't need the full one. And they honestly, they hold on for a while. I still have some of them in my yard, plant it out in the raised beds, plant it out from when I first started my peas and they're going strong. So much less expensive than like a standard, um, you know, designated garden marker. Well, not a garden marker, but like a marker. <laughs> Duh. Sun King. Broccoli. Another idea for those of you who are just thinking about start, starting a vegetable garden or are kind of in the new newbie phase, the middle to end of summer and into the fall is a great time to stock up on discounted seeds. So if you are like me and you're working on a budget and you know that you will be winter sowing into milk jugs because it's the cheapest option at the moment for you, like myself, um, then now is a great time to get online and utilize some of those 50% off discount seed sales. Snow crown cauliflower. I have had, I had great success with most of my winter sowing winter sown vegetables that um, I, there's no doubt that I will do it again this next year because you kind of do it and then forget it for weeks until it's time to open them up and see what's going on. And the planning is always in the front end and the, the effort's always in the front end. But everything that I have in my raised beds, all of these vegetables, I started from seed in winter sown containers. And I think that that is a lot to be said, or direct sown, obviously, but that, that's a lot of seeds and a lot of space. All right, last thing to do is water. Another great thing to mention about these 
containers free from Home Depot is if you're using these biodegradable pots, they get so like, uh, well, they degrade easily. And once wet, they're all mushy and kind of weird and gross. So um, these hold these perfectly. And I'll keep them in here until either I have to transplant them into a bigger container or I can plant them out in the garden. But I'm gonna actually put them in a more shaded spot because while it may get some sun over here during the day, it doesn't need a ton of sun yet. Once it sprouts a few of its first leaves here like this, then I will place them out into the sun so that they can just continue to grow and love life. So as you can see, all of my seedlings, maybe minus the one nasturtium, all of the seed pots have germinated and started to sprout. Uh, and I'm surprised at how well it's doing this project. Um, I hope you guys have learned a bit and been inspired a bit by my succession planting intercropping journey. I hope that you are trying out some of these um, techniques or practices as well this year too. And if not this year, save the video for next year for when you start your own garden because i'm telling you this is how you make your space just explode like subscribe hang out for a while talk to you later guys